Well, hello and welcome to this service of morning prayer, especially if you have just joined us. I'm going to read again from Jesus Calling. I am with you and I am for you. You face nothing alone, absolutely nothing. When you feel anxious, know that you are focusing on the visible world and leaving me out of the picture. The remedy is simple, fix your eyes on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Verbalise your trust in me, the living one who sees you always. I will get you safely through this day and all of your days, but you can find me only in the present. Each day is a precious gift from my father. How ridiculous to grasp for future great gifts when today is set before you. Receive today's gift gratefully, unwrapping it tenderly and delving into its depths. As you savour this gift, you will find me. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God, of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only Son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross, and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our psalm this morning is Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up even to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters and the flood sweeps over me. I have grown weary with crying and my throat is raw. My eyes have failed from looking so long for my God. Those who hate me without any cause are more than the hairs of my head. Those who would destroy me are mighty. My enemies accuse me falsely. Must I now give what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are not hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O oh God of Israel. For your sake I have suffered reproach. Shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, I make my prayer to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O my God. Answer me, O God, in the abundance of your mercy and with your sure salvation. Draw me out from the mire and let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So, our first reading today is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 42, beginning at verse 1. When Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why do you keep looking at one another? I have heard, he said, that there is grain in Egypt, so go down and buy grain for us there, that we may live and not die. So ten of Joseph's brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he feared that harm might come to him. Thus the sons of Israel were among the other people who came to buy grain, for the famine had reached the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was governor over the land. It was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognised them. 
but he treated them like strangers and he spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from, he said. They said from the land of Canaan to buy food. Although Joseph had recognised his brothers, they did not recognise him. Joseph also remembered the dreams that he had dreamed about them. And he said to them, you are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. They said to him, no, my lord, your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants have never been spies. But he said to them, no, you have come to see the nakedness of the land. They said, we are servants, our twelve brothers, the sons of a certain man in the land of Canaan. The youngest, however, is now with our father, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, it is just as I have said to you, you are spies. Here is how you shall be tested. As Pharaoh lives, you shall not leave this place until your youngest brother comes here. Let one of you go and bring your brother while the rest remain in prison, in order that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you, or else, as Pharaoh lives, surely you are spies. And he put them all together in the prison for three days. Rise up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord, who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up, that we may live in his presence. Let us strive to know the Lord, for his appearing is as sure as a sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God, rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So our second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning at verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you for ever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, and you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, though not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and will remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. We preach Christ crucified, the power of God and the wisdom of God. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. 
God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And we say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers this morning for the whole family of your church. Grant that we and all your people may be built up in our faith and always show in our lives the love we see in Jesus. Give courage to those who find it hard to follow you, to those who are find it finding it difficult to have faith in this difficult time. Please let your Holy Spirit support them, and may all Christians stand firm in the hope that your kingdom of love will come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and the many freedoms which we enjoy, even in the midst of this lockdown. We pray for our Queen and for those who govern in her name. Give them health and strength, wisdom and courage, that they may carry out their many duties in the best interests of all people. We pray for children and young people as they go about their learning from home and in some cases school. We think of those children who are finding this new challenge and experience difficult, and those who fear their academic abilities will be stifled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Father, for the touch of coolness in this spring air that gives us hope and joy, for the colouring of trees that show your creativity as the divine artist. We thank you for the harvest of food that brings us gratitude for our sustained life. God of all seasons, as you transform the earth, transform us by your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those whose lives have been shattered by natural disaster, and we hold in our hearts the families forever changed by grief and loss. We ask for your blessing on all those who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, their security and their hope, and we pray for all those who provide emergency assistance. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for people who are ill, be that in hospitals, at home, or wherever they may be. Give them courage, hope and peace, and the knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain and suffering. May the skills and knowledge of those who care for the sick be fully used to help and to heal. And in a time of quietness, we bring before God our own prayers.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most merciful God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world. Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.